to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, Guilt, like the video you are about to watch, in a and comment way, on it. Will never Stay blessed. allow me to dare complain before God. There are too many stories in my life that show the faithfulness of God. I will be wicked and heartless to ever claim he's not faithful. So for me, if I do not have a language of gratitude, I rather not speak. I rather sing and worship him. There are too many reasons in my life. I am a testimony of how God can take a man from nothing to something. How would I be so stupid to complain? shout around he's giving me what money cannot buy his presence listen if you have a property they call you a rich man but someone can bully you and collect it the government can seize it from you are we together if you have investments all over the world they call you a business mogul but everything can crash and fail in one day. Are we together? Yeah. If you have a political position, it is not infinite, it is not everlasting. Are we together? Even if you are a monarch, the reality of death and time can catch up with you. But when he gives you his presence, there is no way to find it and collect it from you. It's not a commodity that belongs to this earth realm. It's a reality that is beyond this realm. It will buy anything. The presence of God is the master capital. It's bigger than land. Bigger than degrees. Bigger than anything. Please believe me. The most expensive commodity is the presence of God. When you have it, you have access to kings and their treasures. When you have it, you have access to businessmen and their wisdom. When you have it, you have access to royalties and their sacrifices. They will bring to you the rewards of their years of labor and beg you to collect it in exchange for the presence of God. Never never you think the presence of God is just a way of feeling spiritual then you quickly feel spiritual then you concentrate on what you think will make you successful no, only a fool does that the presence of God gave the nation of Israel gold and silver in one day what they could not get in 430 years the presence of God became for them a pillar of cloud by day and of fire by night. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when you hear a man of God talk so much about the presence of God, please look up. It's easy to think the man of God is speaking because his life is now comfortable. You know, that's what people think in church. When a preacher is talking like this, you know, they feel ah, you are doing well, you are enjoying. Why will you not talk about the presence of God? But you need to ask how the person started and what brought the person to the current level. Are we together? What you are seeing now is not a seed, it's a harvest. Are we together? Yes. Never covet any man's glory. Pay attention to the story. The story reveals the process. The story reveals the sacrifice. 
we live in a generation where we are obsessed with results and that is important but we focus so much on the end of the results we want finished products but we do not pay attention to how the things are made hallelujah what you are learning will give you anything you admire now so forget about the admiration and focus on the training the training will inevitably bring you to the place of glory father help us tonight in the name of jesus bless you good evening everybody just turn to your left and right and tell your neighbor good evening hallelujah praise the lord all right pick up your pen paper let's get to work there's a lot to do the glory revealed part two last week we started a series the glory revealed it's a series that is supposed to guide us excuse me and teach us the principles how a man's life can become a reflection of all the possibilities that consist in god hallelujah please try to get last week's teaching is free you can get it after the service especially for those who are online following us as so many people and we love you you're part of us the lord honor you in jesus name and i spoke to us last week and i started laying a foundation that the pursuit of godliness please listen the pursuit of godliness the pursuit of relevance in the kingdom begins with an encounter say an encounter the journey of a believer does not start with learning principles and laws and formulas business people teach you that if you want to arrive get formula a add it to b and that's important but anytime you begin to study anything outside of an encounter first it will waste your time and lead you to error because the kingdom is regulated by a person not just systems it is a person who created the systems so you have to encounter the person christ are we together so your journey does not begin by learning about tithes and offerings all the laws that we shared in the series before this they are very important but you must start with an encounter when you meet the person then he will guide you because the bible says there is a way that seemeth right there is a method there is a formula it seems right to a man but the bible says the end thereof are the ways of death and um, we discuss the concept of glory i'm just doing a quick recap how that glory refers to the essence of a thing the character are we together the 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 word glory is from the hebrew word cardboard the greek word is doxa is a reflection of the true nature when the true nature of a thing is expressed we call it the glory of that thing are we together now and then another interesting understanding of the word glory is the possibilities that that's the one i want us to pay attention to is the one that is relevant in this series the glory of a man means all the possibilities that are inherent within the man the glory of this mic is revealed in its ability to amplify sound are we together when you go to buy this mic now and they tell you this singular mic i'm holding is say two hundred thousand. you look at this until you connect it to something then you will see the potentials are we together this is two hundred thousand, for instance because it has an ability to amplify my sound so i can stand here and speak and people down the second overflow and everywhere can hear so the glory of this mic is the possibility inherent in it are we together now so when we talk of the glory of god it refers to all the possibilities that are encapsulated in the person god and that is reflected in the person christ because christ is the full expression of the image of god are we together so jesus came to open us up reveal to us the glory of the father an example of the manifestation of that glory was seen in the healings when he came to people they never knew he had the supernatural ability to heal and so he would tell someone pick up your mat stand up and go glory revealed i did tell us last week that until glory is revealed it cannot be appreciated 
glory that is concealed cannot be appreciated. If you buy a phone, the pack is only a packaging, but the real product is inside. If you keep the pack, even if it's for 10 years, it will not profit you. But when you open it, then you see the content and you appreciate everything that is there. There are phones, for instance, that can just make calls, text messages, and a few things. There are other phones that can browse at, at a level of speed. You can connect to several things, watch videos, and the rest. Those possibilities are the glory in the phone, which is an expression of the wisdom of the company that made it. So the phone reflects the excellency of Samsung or any other LG or whatever product. Are we together now? So Christ came as a manifestation of the glory of God. The invisible God, Yahweh, found earthly expression. And everything Jesus did was a sample of what God can do. He didn't show us everything. He only showed us small and said, you continue. And he sent the spirit of glory are we together to continue so the bible was not supposed to just end with jesus we are epistles we are an unfolding of other dimensions of glory that are possible if jesus were still on the earth would have written more than would have written probably there would have been an episode where he walked on a zinc and came down probably there would have been an episode where he made a dry ground to be full of water but the Holy Spirit came and through Jesus showed us an example that we should follow in his steps. So the goal of this series is to teach us the mystery behind spiritual alignment that can make a man become a reflector of the glory of God. That all there is, all that there is to you is not just your human nature. There is more. Say amen. Amen. So the glory of a thing reflects the possibilities. And um, we began to explain how that one of the keys to experiencing the glory of God is to believe that there is such a possibility. You see, brothers and sisters, God is not a man that he should lie. Are we together? Not the son of man that he should repent. If a Jimmy has 50,000 hidden in his suit pocket is hidden and we cannot see it if he tells me and says i have fifty thousand, my attitude towards him will show whether i believe it or not are we together if i tell you right now on this table there is a phone there is this assuming you cannot see it anything you cannot see you will have to use my person to validate your trust because you cannot see it are we together? So faith is that response that is entirely based on your perception of who God is. Because until there is a manifestation, you do not yet know. Once you have seen it once and again, it's no longer faith. It's called trust. Trust is based on a track record of a man's experience. Faith is based on your knowledge of his person. If I tell you after service, there will be free bus transport to take you. Assuming you are a new person who just came here. It's up to you to look at me and gauge, could this person be lying? And then if you wish, you can ask somebody who has had an experience with me. The last time he spoke like this, was there a boss? And the person tells you yes. So you believe. Not because you have seen a boss. You believe because you think I am too big to lie to you. That's what faith is predicated upon so when god says i want to reveal my glory it's up to you to first believe could god be joking is he playing games with me does he have the ability to back up his claims and this is why we have the bible the bible is a compendium of god's speakings versus their manifestations in the life of people abraham i will make you at the end of it he made abraham he told Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. At the end of it, Gideon became a mighty man. He told the apostles, you will receive power at the end of it. The Bible says, then he swore by himself. 
that by these two immutable things it will be impossible for God to lie to the end that you may find a consolation that every time you see God speak you take him seriously say I believe in God say it again I believe in God hallelujah today I want you to open up your spirit because I believe with all my heart that what I'm about to share with you will truly bless you in the part two of this series we are going to be considering the anointing the glory revealed part two we are looking at the anointing that agency that can help men to reveal the possibilities in God I said to you how that the glory of a man listen please is an unveiling of the possibilities that are in that man but there is a spiritual agency that empowers men to reveal this possibility the name given to it is the anointing acts chapter 1 verse 8 mm. please be very sensitive a lot will happen tonight a lot will happen tonight this series is meant to truly bring an anointing to your life that you can hold on to it you can run with it and you can take every mountain that stands before you say amen acts chapter 1 verse 8 let's read together one to read but ye shall receive what hold on you shall receive the word power there is the word dunamis it's not the word exousia there are many words that are translated power and authority interchangeably two of them that are very important is exousia and dunamis exousia is erroneously translated power in many places in scripture but exousia is not power exousia is an authorization the capacity to stand in the office of someone and represent him is called exousia but this is not exousia this talks of force the agency that compels compliance is called power dunamis so it says you shall receive power after read on that the holy ghost is what come upon you what will that power make you do read on it says and ye shall be unto me where in jerusalem uh-huh Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So his idea is that you become witnesses. Who is a witness? A witness is one who validates that the claim of another is true. Are we together? If we are in the court, for instance, please pay attention. I'm establishing a lot. If we are in the court of law, right, and someone stole my phone and while he was stealing it promise saw the person are we together and now we're in the court of law and i say no this guy sam stole my phone the judge will ask do you have any witness and then we will bring promise let's assume promise was snapping and in the process of snapping he snapped the man picking it that is the evidence a witness is only a witness because he has an evidence without an evidence you cannot be a witness please listen without an evidence you cannot be a witness I can be I mean a Jimmy can be my brother but in this case he cannot be a witness he can support me in prayer but when we stand in court he does not have evidence everybody say evidence I'm building a case here so promise comes before the judge and then he says are you a witness to this he says yes produce your evidence then he produces a photo and that photo shows the person stealing and based on that evidence the judge so the evidence is the power that has forced the phone to return back to me the anointing is the proof that you are a witness the anointing is the evidence when you stand in this court of life and life places a demand on you to prove that God is with you when your family background brings before you a mountain to prove whether God is with you when the limitation in Nigeria stands before you 
and says you are a Christian, prove that God is with you. He says you must receive power. The authorization. You cannot be a witness. So you are going around telling people Jesus saves. And they are saying, what do you mean Jesus saves? Buddha also saves. So what is your evidence? And then the person levitates in the air. This is my evidence. Buddha empowered me. And they say, what is your evidence? And then you say, ba 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 ba. And they say, nonsense. That's not evidence. Hmm. Are we together? When someone comes up on the scene and says, I am a free mason. I worship the flying dragon of Asia. The spirit called Mammon. And this is the evidence. I have built empires by her wisdom. What is your evidence? And then you say, I'm a Christian. I'm just going to heaven. What is your evidence? Please pay attention to tonight's service. Because life will ask you that question. I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself. I'm not one of those religious people. I took time to ask God questions before I started ministry. Because the world will ask me questions. You will stand before businessmen who are idol worshippers. The spirit will give them ideas and they will move forward. And you come ranting and speaking like a fool. You will stand before arrows that fly by day. And noisome pestilences. What is your evidence? When there is a plague moving and it does not affect you, it's an evidence that there is another life in you. Please hear me. This is what I'm trying to teach you in this series. There must be an evidence. Let me tell you why we are talking too much in church. A believer was never designed to be a noise maker. We were designed to be proof producers. Our noise is a, is a cover up for insufficient evidence do you know you can be in a court and speak and the lawyer will say this evidence is not strong enough there are few things the church is doing that unbelievers are not doing very few very few I have studied a lot on world religions I study a lot on religions and so many things Christianity is not the fastest growing religion. I hope you are aware. I will tell you why. Because our strategy is wrong. They have proposed strategies that are not very effective. The religions that represent the fastest growing religions, you never see crusades. Are we together? You never see tracts. You never see people with talking, moving with Bibles all around. But there is a harvest per second per second. God's ability, God's ability is working in me, is working in me. God's ability, God's ability is working. It's God's ability. God's ability. Working in me. Working in me. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and pray and say, Lord, there must be an evidence. An evidence. I'm tired of bringing mockery to your name. And misrepresenting you. Go ahead and pray. Shakata baba baba. Reketeketeleba. He shall receive power. Power. Not stories. Power. Not stories. Power. Sheketeketelebo kosoba. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Fire is burning in this place, I tell you. Acts 
chapter 10 verse 38 please help us media I came to challenge you the way we are doing church and Christianity we are about to disappoint God we need evidences not evidences just from preachers are we together I will never follow a God who cannot prove himself I'm not one of those people they like they say just believe don't worry in his time no way no way no way before Gideon accepted the assignment he asked questions before Mary accepted she, she said how shall these things be because according to my knowledge a man and a woman will produce pregnancy but he said the power of the highest in other words there is another root in the spirit you have known that it's only a man and a woman you have known that you only wait for five years to get a job but there is another root the power of the highest shall overshadow you see I bring you another way there is not only one way of doing things the world has created their way but God has his way how God anointed Jesus let me tell you what that means look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who was anointed this way Jesus he was not anointed three days to the cross he would have had 33 years of a wasted experience and three days of impact he was anointed before how many of us have been taught to start moving without empowerment he says as a result of that who went about doing what doing good an example of the good he did was to heal all that were oppressed of the devil that was not the only good he did he multiplied bread doing good by the anointing he forced money inside the mouth of a fish doing good by the anointing he multiplied bread and fish by the anointing he calmed the storm by the anointing he vindicated a woman who was on her way to death by the anointing he raised the dead by the anointing and the Bible says he went about doing good and healing all that they, all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Divine presence bringing the anointing in the life of Jesus and Jesus moved around doing good. You are going around trying to do good. Willing to do good. Meaning to do good. But good is not coming because good is not just a desire. There is an empowerment. Men are empowered to do good. I want to help the poor. There is an anointing that helps you to do good. Write this down. What is the anointing? Please participate and listen patiently and carefully. Those outside in any of the overflows, just pay attention. You may be standing, but listen. Number one. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. The anointing is God's seal of authorization upon a man, upon any man, not a preacher. God's seal of authorization upon you to represent him. Every military man has a uniform. The uniform is a seal of authorization. When the military man is in mufti, he has no rights to do certain things. But when he wears his uniform, his uniform and his badge is his seal of authorization. Are we together? Mm. Paul said, Paul, I, Paul, a man approved of God with miracles, signs and diverse manifestations. Approved of God. That is the evidence of my apostleship. Hallelujah. So number one, God's seal of authorization upon a man to represent him. Number two, the anointing is God's capacity.
capacity to produce change and compel compliance write it down underline compel because we live in a stubborn world that will not change by desire it takes power to change things it takes power to change genotype from SS to AA it takes power to change a cancerous cell to a healthy cell it takes power to raise the dead it takes power to prosper hallelujah are we together it takes power to prosper we all want to prosper but we neglect the place of power many people bow to gods bow to spirits receive power from them they sacrifice children turn them upside down and drain their blood and the man takes his pen upon that blood and goes to sign a proposal and whenever you see it you must approve it that's power and yet many believers just move around and they ask you why should you get this proposal you say I'm sincere welcome to the world where only mantles speak your long story and English will not do you much when Moses went to Pharaoh he said Pharaoh this is what the Lord said Pharaoh said nonsense he said my rod continue the conversation I don't have time for this rubbish Janus and Jembers brought their own rod when he swallowed it Moses said take note of this I'm coming back and he left after nine plagues Pharaoh was still hardened then the Bible says yet one more plague will I bring upon Pharaoh and the nation of Israel he says afterwards he shall let you go and he didn't let them go the Bible says they were driven to go out they didn't wait for their dough to rise to make chinchi. they were in a hurry they made it anyhow because a man was tired may you anoint in weary darkness to let you go I'm not motivating you there is an unction a man can carry no matter how mad a man is he will not enter fire by mistake give him two minutes that madness will rearrange itself until it comes out because fire was not designed to fear the bible says he maketh his angels winds no more spirits and his ministers flames of fire there is power in the name of jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please look up. Someone came to me and said, every night. There's a spirit that comes to him and oppresses him. Just when things are about to happen, a stranger steps into his room. And I said, it's because that stranger has not seen power. The Bible says no man can enter a man's house and spoil him. What will you first do? Discuss, suggest, bind the strong man, he says, and then you spoil his goods. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen i prophesy to you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen sing it one more time everything that was lost shall be returned unto you Have you seen someone steal a laptop because he saw a room empty and you steal the laptop and run away with it? Are we together? Run away with the laptop because you are more powerful than the person. Then what does the owner do? He goes to the police station and carries a policeman. Are we together? They hold guns and they enter a van. Then they come and meet the owner after two weeks. And say we are going to kill you power above his power what does he do he shows you the laptop is still lying down there quietly 
and he carries it the bible said when you catch a thief if he gives you back what he has stolen he has still cheated you he will restore tenfold that profit must be added in the realm of the spirit when you catch a thief he doesn't pay back what he has stolen because time would have gone are we together if the breakthrough had come in 2005 by now you would have helped many people so now that it did not come you are not just going to receive it like that if you receive it you did it was not restoration it was just progress continued the capacity to produce change and compel compliance if Buhari announces right now and says tomorrow is public holiday assuming tomorrow were a working day immediately he speaks all the armed forces and the military people and paramilitary he is using authority not power what he's using is exousia his office as a president to speak but dunamis are the soldiers so they move on the street with cane guns tear gas and uh, black maria what are they doing compelling compliance if they find you roaming around still trying to sell drugs in your pharmacy they ask you did you not hear what the president said and then you, they hop you into the black maria and penalize you god makes the statement the earth is the lord's he's waiting for you to create that compliance are we together now number three we're still defining the anointing what is the anointing the anointing write it down is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in god the empowerment the capacity to manifest the possibilities in god the anointing is the empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. It's not enough to chorus and say God is love. It's not enough to chorus and say God is mighty. Are we together now? Your life must produce the evidence. Number four, the last definition. What is the anointing? The anointing is the agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. The agency to reveal the love and the sovereignty of Jesus. There are two things God is obsessed that they be revealed on the earth. Number one is his love. Number two is his sovereignty. His might as the sovereign ruler. That's where the word Lord comes from. There is a desire in God to see his love find expression in the earth. There is a desire in God to see his sovereignty find expression. Hallelujah. There are two dimensions to the anointing. Please just write this quickly. That's not really where we are dwelling. We preach many messages on the anointing, but just for us to know. There are two dimensions of the anointing, broadly speaking. Number one, there is the personal anointing that empowers a man to grow and be like Jesus. There is a personal anointing that empowers a man to grow spiritually and be like Jesus. People like Kenneth E. Hagin call it the anointing within. The personal anointing that is for your spiritual growth to, to help you grow to the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. It is the anointing that teaches you all things. It is the unction from the Holy One that empowers you. Right? The grace of God has appeared unto all men, teaching us to say no. There is the personal anointing to grow and represent Christ. 1 John 2.20, media please. 1 John 2.20 That's the first dimension of the anointing. Every believer in Christ is entitled to that dimension of the anointing. Even that dimension itself can grow. Everyone is entitled. Read after me please. One to read. 
it says but ye have an unction from the holy one and as a result you know all things you have an unction whether you are a preacher whatever you, if you are in Christ you are entitled to this dimension of the anointing hallelujah the second dimension of the anointing and trust me I know what I'm saying the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment the second dimension of the anointing is the anointing given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment that is the anointing of your call the anointing of your destiny the anointing of your destiny is not the same as the anointing of your personal spiritual growth. It's the anointing that backs you up to make sure you fulfill purpose. The anointing that is given to you on account of a spiritual office or an assignment. Write this down. It is the anointing that reveals your destiny. It is the anointing that empowers you to fulfill your assignment on earth. That one comes with discovering your call. That one comes with discovering your place in life and destiny. It doesn't come just because you are born again. Are we together? If God calls you into ministry, there is an anointing that follows you. If God calls you into business, there is an anointing that follows you. The moment you assume that position of being an ambassador, you are ready to take one of the seven mountains that control humans. One of the seven mountains, the mountains of religion, the mountains of government, the mountains of, of, of arts and entertainment, the mountain of media, the mountain of education, the mountain of family, and the mountain of finance. Any one of those mountains God sends you, there is an anointing. Are we together? Because there are rulers of darkness. The Bible tells us, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, he says, but against what? Principalities, against powers against rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places these are rankings and all these spirits are strategically stationed on this mountain listen to my message give me this mountain there i teach on the spiritual dimension of success success is not just by degrees success is not just by intelligence success is not just by being scientific there is a spirituality because there are giants on every mountain but Caleb said, give me this mountain. Hallelujah. So there is an anointing that comes with your call. There is an anointing that comes with your assignment. When God empowers you, he puts an anointing upon your life, an anointing upon the ministry he has committed to you. Are we together? There is an anointing upon Benny Hinn that produces that result. Now, let me tell you something about this second dimension of the anointing. Listen. This second dimension of the anointing is not operational anytime. I want you to understand this. Are we together? There is a timing and there are seasons of its operation. This anointing for your assignment is not operational anytime. There are three laws that govern its operation. One, a demand from those who desire to be recipients of it it responds to faith it responds to desire are we together the bible says in acts chapter 4 how that when he was passing the gates beautiful the man was begging for arms and peter told him look on us and he looked at them expecting to receive and he says silver and gold that expectation provokes the anointing blind Bartimaeus cried thou son of David he provoked the anointing that is the anointing people like Kenneth E. Hagen would call the anointing upon it doesn't come all the time anybody that tells you it comes all the time is a liar and doesn't understand anything about the anointing if it's operational in you all the time it will kill you you do not have the physical capacity your body does not have that stamina have you finished preaching and you went back and felt tired it lifted that's what Jesus meant by virtue 
has gone out of me. When virtue leaves you, prophets in ancient times, when the anointing landed upon them for their experience, when it lifted, some of them were sick for days. They had to eat herbs to recover from the stream. Are we together? This anointing is activated at the point of delivery. At the point where you have to do that which you were born to do. So you can be sleeping in your house. The moment there is a demand and it is with respect to your assignment, the anointing is like a lion within you. Are we together? That's the reason why you can see a man of God. You may not even be able to touch him when he's on stage. After the meeting, you are hugging him, slapping him because something has lifted. But if by any mistake you're hugging, you apply faith to it, it will return. That's what makes people just, they are laughing and the next in the power of God because their hunger did not die with the service. Are we together? So many people were touching Jesus and a woman came. He said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment. Jesus was not even aware, but it was automatic. The moment there was a demand, that anointing, that messianic anointing that will fulfill Isaiah 61 to bind up the brokenhearted. The anointing that is given on account of your assignment. Two scriptures to help us. Isaiah 61, please will not read it, um, will not project it, just write it. Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon me because he gave me an assignment that requires an authorization. So because of that, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And with that spirit came an anointing to preach glad tidings, to bind up the brokenhearted, right? To set the captives free, to open up the doors of prison, to declare the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all day that morning in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The anointing came for that reason. Jesus reiterated it again in Luke chapter 4. When you read from verse 14 to 18, the Bible says they brought to him right that which was written by Isaiah the prophet and then he opened it and he began to read the spirit of the lord is upon me and at the end of it he said this day is this scripture fulfilled i have come as a fulfillment of this then he began to do it in one of the synoptic gospels there and then he told a man with a withered hand stretch forth your hand as a proof that i have come What is the purpose of the anointing? I've said it to us, but we must. The purpose is, is encapsulated in the definition. But the purpose of the anointing. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. Isaiah 10, 27. I'd like us to read it together. It's projected. One to read shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed why listen please look up there are yokes there are burdens there are afflictions upon the lives and the destinies of men upon the families of men robbing men of their dignity mocking God's statement that he made man like him and it takes the anointing to correct that error are we together the anointing comes to lift burdens the anointing comes to break yokes the anointing comes to open up prison doors to them that are bound. Number two, Psalm 66 verse 3. Psalm 66 verse 3. Let's read it please. 
Just write it and look up and let's read. One, two, read. Say unto God. Uh huh. Read on. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to thee. Not through the greatness of grammar. Not through English and negotiation. On the strength of the excellency of your power. Listen, let me tell you something. You are liable for oppression the moment you find yourself here. Unfortunately, it is not given to you to choose to arrive here. Are we together? The moment you are born, there are children who from birth, they are already born with all kinds of sicknesses. Are we together? They never chose it. It's the reality. Listen, let me tell you. The moment you cross the second heavens, the domain of evil can find expression. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, the Bible says. But from the second heavens, demonic activities are authorized to find expression. Down till under the earth. That's what happens to children. The moment, it's not a man and a woman that produces children. They just create the body for the child to come. But the moment that child arrives, right from the interface of the second heavens, war begins over the destiny of the child. It's left for the father and the mother to be spiritual enough to secure the destiny of the child. Or careless enough to allow anything to happen. Are we together? Yeah. That is why you hear that children are initiated from the womb. How can you initiate a child whose faculty of reasoning is not there? Are we together? Is it not in your Bible that John was filled with the Holy Ghost from the womb? How did he pray in tongues? How did he manifest that? Hallelujah. I want to show you four keys to accessing the anointing. This, this is the place where I want us to be sensitive now. Because you are not only going to hear, you are going to receive. Amen. Hallelujah. Please believe me. You are not going to hear alone. You are going to receive. Amen. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. I enter the Holy of Holies. I enter through the blood of the Lamb. I enter to worship you only. I enter to honor I am. Holy Spirit, we wait on you. Holy Spirit, I wait on you. Holy Spirit. I wait on you for fire. Kaba kaba ya for fire. For fire. Lord, we wait. You can make tonight your night of encounter listen there was a time in my life the anointing was not upon me I was not born with it 
are we together a time can come and tonight can be that time if you believe but if you are careless Elijah said if you can see me was he blind it's a spiritual language there is a measure of sensitivity it takes to truly grab the anointing it's not about falling down look at me it's not about falling down it's about your spirit station you are not just hearing you are seeing what the Lord is saying let me tell you something the difference between you and the next level of your life is the anointing there is nothing that will cover for the absence of the anointing I know it you reign you ancient Zion's king Kadosh, Kadosh, you, you were mighty on your throne. Just follow me, follow me. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you were mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep. And we God us. You were mighty on the throne. Yeah, yeah. You're mighty in this place. Yeah, Abba Shaba Kataya. Your mighty display Shalom, Shalom, my father, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Jehovah, Baba Shaka Tabayada, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Yeah, 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 you're welcome in this place. sensitive what are the keys that have turned ordinary men to wonders workers of miracles what can a man do what is the secret that can open up this fountain in the spirit for no man is born with this thing hear me there is a key there are keys no man is born with unction Jesus himself what can make a man of God so powerful that your words can create an effect in the life of men you are speaking from one end and someone outside is shaking like a leaf what is the key please hear me this is an office I'm not speaking to you as a man I can speak to you as a man who has researched this truth but I speak to you as a custodian of the mystery of this thing. I may not show you, I may not boast that I know business principles. I may not boast that I know on leadership. But I can teach you the mysteries of the presence of God. For it is an office. It was given to me by Jesus Christ. The angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. The heavens are not the door. The angels bow before you. 
You're beautiful. Yeah. You're beautiful. Just follow me tonight. Heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You're beautiful. Heavens and earth are The angels found the glory. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. oh. understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will walk in a new dimension believe me understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ministry will change like day and night understand what I'm teaching you tonight and you will become like a God upon the earth understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your ranking will change instantly in the spirit understand what I'm teaching you tonight and your life will become a wonder it's not by quoting scripture it's a realm you can stand in number one the first key to accessing the anointing is salvation don't trivialize it write it and take it as serious as anything there are many people in church who are not born again but they want power there are many pastors on the altar who are not born again but they want power you can fast as an unbeliever you will never find power you can be the pa of a man of god and not be born again please hear me that they ordained you does not mean you are born again are you hearing what i'm saying ah i tell you i sense fire in this place that you were ordained they poured oil on you does not mean that you are born again let me tell you we can do what we know to do on earth but it depends on whether god approves of it or not ah, 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 ah. That's what I'm hearing in the spirit. John chapter 1 verse 12 we have to hurry up because God will soon sit in this place the weight of his glory but as many as received him meaning not everybody will receive him as many as received him to them gave he what power the power is for those who receive him not those who are near him not those who go to where he is proximity to god is not salvation let me tell you the truth there are so many people who need to examine their born again i am telling you this there are many people who are not born again are we together 
and I don't mean just by religious activities no an encounter with Jesus Christ no there are people who are not born again you will say this and many people will argue with you but the way the early church were born again when they were born again fire fell on them salvation the power to become is for those who receive for those who receive him they are the type God will back God does not back everybody just because Jesus died for everybody does not mean you just speak and things happen you know it's and, and please if you're a pastor here hear me aside from the impartation you receive tonight open your eyes don't think it's just by wearing suit and holding a mic Oh, the power of God is here. All these things we keep doing, we fool ourselves. Nothing will cover for the absence of an encounter. Not suit, not English, not Greek and Hebrew. There must be a track record in the secret place. He said, that which I tell you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. You don't just come and stand and because they gave you a mic, you expect things to happen. No, sir. Human beings are not robots. Are we together? Human beings are not idiots. Do you know the power it takes to lift a man off his seat? I don't mean physically alone. Track record. Salvation. Number two. The second key. Give us 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. The second key. Pay attention. To a rich, heavy deposit of the anointing upon your life that is undeniable is addiction and passion for God and his kingdom addiction passion I'll give you more than a song for a song in itself is that what you have required you search much deeper within to the way things are You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus There is no power for part-time Christianity there is no power for part-time addiction there is no power for part-time ministry so many pastors are part-time ministers by part-time I don't mean that you are doing another thing part-time with God and part-time with ambition looking for relevance joining all kinds of stupid associations to quickly rise the ladder of ministry no it is God that lifts men please hear me your addiction for God must supersede your addiction for money must supersede your addiction for church your addiction for Versace and boss and Gucci your addiction for cars and houses if you want God's power except if you want to go and see a herbalist but if you want the power that comes from heaven, it must match your level of addiction. You will never have more power beyond your addiction. No. Your addiction defines the flow of the anointing. How addicted are you to God as a person? Two, how addicted are you to his kingdom? To seeing his kingdom come? Don't say I'm addicted. It shows in your giving. It shows in your time. It shows in your service in the house of God. Don't tell me you are addicted to God when you can be comfortable and come and sit in a ministry for months and years and you are not part of building that house. You are not addicted. No. It says as the deer pants after the water brooks, so my soul pants after you. It was the psalmist that said this. It says... Oh Lord, you are my God. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. Right? To see your power and your glory. 
let me tell you something many Christians in our generation we love God we are born again but we are too ashamed of our addiction addiction the same way have you seen someone addicted to uh, what they call this thing Indian hemp the person will not mind coming to meet a small child and say sir please give me 10 naira. I have not eaten he's lying so obviously but because he cannot help it if you can still manage your passion for God you don't love him enough Oh, let's let's be real let's let's not act like fools you are joking you want power I'm telling you you must fall in love with God with all your heart not fall in love with the healing anointing many of us are I you know I pray for people and most times when people come that I pray for them so that they will receive double portion or triple portion or whatever I know they don't love God they even love me more than God I see it in their expression that they only love me because we have taught that you should honor a man. You know that they love me more than God. You know they love that anointing more than God. Anything above God, even if he gave you, is an idol. Whatever it is, please hear me. Do you love God more than your beauty? Do you love God more than power? Do you love God more than koinonia? Do you love God more than Joshua Selman? That's addiction. Do you love God more than marriage? Do you love God more than, more than whatever it is? All these carnal things that take our time. Please fall in love with God in a way that nothing in time. People get jobs. When they lose jobs, they backslide. What a shame to your passion for God. You are in a relationship. Someone says, I will marry you. All of a sudden, he says, I'm not doing. And you leave God. God, I'm angry. Jesus told the disciples, he said, will you also go? And they said, to whom shall we go? Where, where are we going? Leaving you is no longer an option. If you never bless me, I still, I mean, I still owe you my love forever. Please, let me tell you something. If you want power from God, stop seeking God just because of things. Stop seeking God just because of things. Oh Lord, I want your time. I want your hand and we bend God's hand with fasting and prayer no how many pastors want to see God glorified in their assemblies very little I can tell you this many pastors fast some of you are like that probably you came from somewhere you are sitting boiling waiting for the time of impartation and God is saying calm down not so so that you will not go back disappointed God is not a herbalist there is a protocol to true spiritual power. Addiction. Addiction. Outspoken Christianity. Outspoken Christianity. Not the type you off your ringtone. Because you are in a place that, 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 that will fall your hand. If God falls your hand, you are fallen. I tell you. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. The psalmist said. I will trade my palace and its honor to serve God. Forever you will be. Forever you will be. The lamb upon the throne. The lamb upon the throne. And I gladly bow my To worship you alone. MOG, it's time to seek God more than ministry. Your ministry is distracting you and killing you from God. You have carried ministry and put on your head like a luggage that came from demons. And you, you will afford for your secret place to suffer so that you will fulfill a ministerial schedule. I can cancel any ministration for my secret place. You know, we think being busy is ministry. Oh, today I'm in Hawaii. Tomorrow I'm in Dubai. Next tomorrow I'm in South Africa. Next tomorrow I'm in UK. Then I'm in Accra Ibom. I'm in London. And we think because we are hopping up and down, we are doing ministry. Let me tell you, you may be doing all these things, but before God, you are not doing anything. Your heart is more important than your voice to God. 
don't think because you are always talking it means God is hearing you no your heart number three let's hurry up I want us to pray what is the third key the baptism of the Holy Ghost the third key to fire in your life is the baptism of the Holy Ghost slash prayers so you write it slash prayers that the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 the baptism of the Holy Spirit backed up by the ability to pray in tongues fluent tongues now there's no time for me to go into this discussion please don't stop Mike don't stop you see this concept of prayer and the concept of the baptism of the Holy Spirit has been hijacked by Satan please listen to me it is not a denominational perspective it has nothing to do with Pentecostalism and charismatism I was never filled with the Holy Ghost in any church there is no pastor no denomination that can claim that it was because I was in the assembly no God did that for me specifically so that I will be able to communicate these truths to people the devil has cheated us and I know many of us is in fear so that we don't get into witchcraft and diabolism I understand and I respect your passion but listen to me if you want power in this kingdom that endowment with power that endowment with power ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 says now when the day of Pentecost were fully come he said they were gathered together in one accord verse 2 says suddenly suddenly not gradually the baptism does not happen gradually suddenly are we together suddenly they had a sound that sound as of a mighty rushing wind and the bible says it came and filled the room and then the bible says they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire and it rested on each each one of them not some they're not as shared each one of them then the bible says then they began to speak with tongues as the holy ghost gave them utterance they were 120 in the upper room it was such an experience that all the people around that place came and saw the mighty things they were doing and they said these men were drunk with new wine they linked that experience with wine the same way a man drinks beer one bottle two bottles ten bottles at the eleventh one is not himself again another influence takes him so when they saw the men he said you are behaving like those who have taken this thing are we together now and then in Acts chapter 3 still well Acts chapter 2 when Peter finished preaching to them the Bible says they were caught to the heart and this is what they said men and brethren what shall we do and then he says repent for the remission of your sins and then he says you shall receive this promise for the promise is unto you and your children and your children's children and as many as are far off as many as the Lord will call that included us are we together yeah in Acts chapter 19 from verse 1 to 4 is the most classic explanation of the baptism of the Holy Spirit Paul having passed through the upper coast the Bible says he came and he found certain disciples disciples they were already born again give us Acts please 19 1 to 4 they had passed through the upper coast the Bible says Paul came and found certain disciples are we together and then he asked them a question verse 2 he says have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe meaning it's not the same experience has been born again initiated by the same spirit but there are two separate experiences have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed 
and then they replied him they said we have not even heard if there be any holy ghost and paul was surprised and then he says unto what then were you baptized he was asking them a question and they said the baptism of john then Paul began to explain to them he said the baptism of John was a baptism of repentance that they should believe on the one who was to come that means it was Jesus Christ and afterwards Paul said the Bible says they were now baptized to the name of Jesus Christ and then Paul laid his hands upon them and then the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues right they were 12 in number have you received the Holy Ghost have you received that empowerment since you believed when you read let's read from 18 18 the last five verses if you can give it to us right the bible talks about a very intelligent man hallelujah um no not 19 verse 18 18 acts 18 acts 18 please the last four verses acts 18 are you with us acts 18 okay let's just let's just turn there so we don't waste time okay now the bible says give us from verse 24 let's start from 24 listen to this story a certain jew named who apollos and the Bible says Apollos was born at Alexandria. He said he was a man who was mighty in scriptures. He was eloquent. He was an orator. Are we together? And then the Bible says he came to Ephesus. Ephesus is not the place you come and preach nonsense. It's where Paul got his revelation of the highest church truth. There was a goddess called Diana in Ephesus. She was the goddess that controlled that center of economy. So you had to be sound and mighty in scriptures. Now Apollos came. Next verse. 25. He said the man was instructed in the way of the Lord. And was what? Fervent in spirit. Zealous. The Bible says. And he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he had a limitation. What was his limitation? Knowing only the baptism of John. He was born again and he knew repentance like many people in churches like many pastors they are zealous they love god but the scope of the understanding of god is the baptism of john let's see what happened one day he went to a crusade to impress everybody as usual he says and he began to speak in the synagogue and then there were two strange men in that synagogue they were men who were powerful people of the spirit called Aquila and Priscilla they said when they had him and they they took him with them they said we see zeal in you but you are limited there is a theology that has not been taught to you we want to upgrade your scope of the understanding of God the Bible says they took him hear me and then they says they expounded to him the way of God more what perfectly let's see what he did as a result next verse and when he was disposed and passed to Achaia, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him. The Bible says, who when he was come, he helped them much which believed through grace. Let's see what he did. Next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews. Now he had an evidence. He didn't just speak to them. In the former verses, he was eloquent. Sorry. But now he could convince them that publicly showing by the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ this was not just gist again there was an evidence there was an empowerment listen you must be tired of explanations oh God is this God is that one miracle can answer a thousand questions there is no amount of message you want to preach that will impress men again the internet is full of messages there are all kinds of men of god with perspectives all across africa all across the world messages are now free what the world needs is a demonstration of power romans chapter 8 please verse 19 
Romans chapter 8 For the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation not the explanation not the discussion Let's see it in the New Living Translation or the Message Bible I'm looking for the version that says creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are There is a version like that 8 verse 19 not 20 8 verse 19 8 verse 19 uh, thank you NLT for creation is what eagerly waiting for that future day when God will reveal who his children really are because the Bible says it does not yet appear they are still looking at us and they think we are like them. But there is an activity happening in us. The Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Are we together? The Bible says, Now are we the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. We are still in the formation. There is still a building. Christ is still being formed in us. Like Paul prayed to the church. He said, My little children of whom I travel until Christ be formed. For when he's done, let me tell you, he will produce a wonder in our lives. First Corinthians 2 verse 7 quickly and then we'll go to the last key and we'll pray. First Corinthians 2 verse 7. He says, talking about the mystery of this language of the spirit. He said, no, please give it to us. Um, okay no problem no problem let's just sleep again it says no the wisdom we speak it doesn't make sense but the bible calls it the hidden wisdom god put it like that so that only humble people can walk in it if you are not humble enough to receive that hidden wisdom the bible says we speak the wisdom we speak of is what the mystery everybody say mystery the same way there is a traditional festival and you see people going around fire and making enchantments and putting fire on their body have you seen that happen and it doesn't burn them they put the fire in their mouth and bring it out they carry knife and put it in their mouth and it enters and brings it out because they are operating on a mystery the bible says to the believer there is a mystery that has been given you It says the mystery of God his plan that was he previously hidden what was it he said even though he made it for our ultimate glory so one secret to your entering the glory is this mystery called tongues when a man locks up himself and begins to pray people say you are just talking nonsense no problem it's the same way you talk nonsense and call it laughter. <laughs> and nobody laughs at you. It's intelligent. In fact, people accuse you for not laughing. Who taught you how to laugh? The same way your cry, as sarcastic as it looks, it compels compassion. Tongues is also like that. Don't let anybody tell you you are taught to pray in tongues. When you slap a baby, Shade, when you gave birth to your child, and they slapped the child and the child started crying who taught the child that they cry with the mouth not the eyes it was programmed there listen i want you to know that the believer is supernatural when you remove the supernatural we are just herbalists leaders or and followers of a religion don't remove the supernatural dimension hallelujah made for our glory any man who does not pray cannot reveal the glory of God. There is a relationship between prayer and power. Acts 1 verse 8, you shall receive power. Acts 2 verse 1 to 4, they receive tongues. Jesus didn't say you will receive tongues. He said you receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. Meaning there is a system that tongues uses to translate and produce power in a man. 
it was Paul himself that said I thank my God I pray in tongues more than ye hallelujah Luke 18 verse 1 he spake a parable unto them to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first Thessalonians 5 17 pray without ceasing it doesn't mean pray from morning till night you'll be an irresponsible person it means pray consistently the Bible says and the fire upon the altar it shall never go down day or night let me tell you something whatever attacks your prayer life has really destroyed your life it's cheaper for your finances to be attacked than for your prayer life it's cheaper as bad as it is for your health to be attacked than your prayer life and let me tell you how Satan attacks you he makes you to resent everybody that can help you you fight and quarrel them and push them when you are alone then he attacks you Satan never attacks you until he creates an occasion through bitterness through anger through fault finding so everybody that can help you and intercede for you he cuts you away from them and then he leaves you alone solitude is a sign that darkness is close to you listen listen excessive solitude i'm not talking of just retreating to pray when there is a desire in you to not hear people to not listen you are in a world of your own it's a sign that darkness is close to you it's a strategy for your destruction the last key to receiving unction to reveal the glory is called impartation the mystery of impartation transference of grace transference of unction transference of power numbers chapter 27 we'll just look at one example so that we pray let's see what transpired between Moses and Joshua a classic sign of biblical impartation numbers 27 verse 18 to 23 numbers chapter 27 please write this scripture down and study it with all your heart this was God instructing Moses to prepare Joshua for ministry are we together are you ready let's read one to read and the Lord said unto Moses take thee Joshua the son of Nun a man in whom is the spirit and do what lay your hands upon him that what should happen next verse and set him before Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and give him a charge in their sight are we together and he says and thou shalt put some of thine honor can you show me where honor is in a man God said don't just through impartation transfer your spirit transfer your honor I told you honor is not something you fight for it's a mantle that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient there is a mantle that makes men loyal to a grace it's not by shouting and saying obey me there is a mantle And he shall stand before Eleazar the priest who shall speak counsel for him and so on and so forth and so on and so forth now let's see what happened Deuteronomy chapter 3 chapter 34 verse 9 just one scripture Deuteronomy 34 is still a continuation of this story Deuteronomy 34 verse 9 let's read together one two read uh -huh. was full of the spirit of wisdom why for Moses had what laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him listen you know why people don't listen to you because you are trying to do ministry using seniority you are trying to do ministry saying don't disrespect me there is an unction that compels loyalty men are not loyal to a man just because he can preach they will clap for you when you see a ministry that can follow a man unto death 
brothers and sisters there is a mystery upon his head I can tell you Koinonia has that mystery hmm. you see ba there are secrets in this kingdom there are secrets in this kingdom the one you can find is the one you will live by the one you do not know is the one that will chain you forever God said I want to honor Joshua but I will not ignore a vessel who is already carrying it he said Moses it is within your power to put your spirit and your honor upon him listen you can carry a man's grace and the virtue of God upon his life and reap. you can trace an anointing and know where it came from are we together you can see a man stand on stage and know that this came from Benihin. this one you can see this prayer fire and know this one came from Duncan Williams this one did not just come from this you can see a prosperity mantle and trace it anointings are like address they can show you where they came from I'm a product of many anointings. The glory revealed through the anointing. The anointing giving you capacity to produce an evidence. An evidence. An evidence. There are different kinds of anointings. There is the power to prosper. Shout it. Say the power to prosper. I want you to shout it like you mean it. Say the power to prosper. The power to prosper. This is what many people need to pray for. I'm not against business ideas. I teach you principles. There's financial dominion. But I can tell you there is such a thing as the power to prosper. If you don't have it, I've seen people who have all kinds of business ideas. But the power to prosper is not a business idea. The power to prosper is a grace that compels creation to respond to you in a certain way. Jesus had it. He said, go and you will see a donkey, a coat. No man had written on it. Bring it. The owner could not say no. What kind of grace is that? That's the grace that will make you tell somebody, we need speakers for our program and he said take it that's the grace that will make somebody say take my car and be using it for this crusade there is such a grace let me tell you something how you will know the power to prosper is not in your life is that you pay for everything if you pay for everything the power to prosper is not it's not about being a millionaire the power to prosper is not about being a millionaire it's about the supernatural speaking in your life. Men are rising to help you when there is trouble. Listen, if you are in trouble and there is no man who can arise to help you, I'm telling you, the power to prosper is not the power for finances. We have reduced it to money. Every time preachers preach, they, they mean the power to give you dollars. Please don't insult God. Money was an idea. By the time that scripture was written, there was no naira, there was no dollar. It's the power that moves you forward. Even if it must raise help us from anywhere. I want you to believe this. By the grace of God, this is how this ministry came. The power to prosper. Listen, please, I don't know how, I don't want you to think money money is part of it if you think money you will be you will think i am saying the power to get money to buy watch and suit that's nonsense that's not what i'm talking about to prosper means to do well to prosper means by all means you will excel are we together the pros the power to prosper is the power that moves men to support your interest at the expense of their own interest when you see a man a man who can leave his own assignment and pursue another man's assignment there is power to prosper there that's what god wanted to give us but pastors have told us the power to prosper is the power to buy a nice shoe and you sit down and pray for hours you don't need to be born again to buy a nice shoe 
you just need to offer value and it will come this is this is not about getting money for sure the power that causes men to move you forward you can have money but do you have helpers you can have money but do you have endorsers you can have money but do you have men that can lift your hand this is the power to prosper say i need the power to prosper the key to suffering in a christian's life is to ignore the power to prosper believe me you may get a job very soon you'll find out that money does not do everything money is not everything money is very important don't get me wrong but money is not everything there are people today who are in houses that they are not paying the rent that's the power to prosper you can have 500,000 to rent a duplex you can have 2.5 million to rent a duplex that's not necessarily the power to prosper that's good financial acumen good financial intelligence and that's commendable but the power to prosper is that you can leave your house with nothing and return back with miracles because there are men stationed anywhere whether you forget your money or not it doesn't make any difference because there is an unction that sends helpers as at when due that's the power to prosper and if our God is for us then who can never stop us and if our God is with us then what can stop us help me Of the power to prosper is the ministry of men in your life the ministry of men in your life help us everywhere please listen it's not just intelligence to produce result by yourself this body is limited there is too much you can do there is only so much you can do with this body are we together yes see let me tell you something if the only job of the power to prosper is to give you money then Bill Gates can mock the church are we together you know we think all there is to the power to prosper is money I don't insult any man of God we have preached this thing but I'm saying we have limited the power to prosper to money so those who don't like money just say no 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 I don't like it to reject the power to prosper is like to cut two of your legs in the spirit how else will you move are we together the bible says david was in the cave of adulam by himself all of a sudden 400 men that's the power to prosper they came to him in the cave and they said be a leader after over us we will hear you and we will walk with you in ancient times you were not rich if you just had money they can come and beat you and kill you and remove your head and carry the gold you were rich if you had people people it was a battle of territory and loyalty but in our generation now you can be a, a greedy person that just looted from the national treasury and carry money and buy suit and come and deceive us we know what the power to prosper is there are people who are rich but they do not have it that's why they don't give god the glory when you suffer for everything you can't give god the glory are we together you suffer to get a job you suffer to keep it you suffer to buy a car you suffer to change another one you suffer to get your wife pregnant suffering all around how can you give God the glory but when you sit down and watch God God will say son I want to embarrass you stand still you have done something that has touched me stand still hallelujah one time we we're coming back from Ekiti and when we're coming back from Ekiti I don't share too much of these testimonies but someone just did a heavy transfer into the ministry's account honestly I don't even know the person I had to ask the protocol people do you know this person help us everywhere not just cash not just kind someone will come and meet you and say there is a property somewhere i could not sleep the lord said i should bless you 
power to prosper someone says from today until december i will fuel the generator of koinonia don't even tell apostle that's the power to prosper they make your journey easy by making you lighter you can have the money but you will sleep because of it let me tell you one of the graces i trust god to release tonight is the power to prosper i'm explaining it to you so that you will believe if it's not in your life you are going to cry this night because some of us it, once you are stranded you are dead there no helper you call and everybody ends your call it's not about hustling it's about ebenezer the helper of zion are we together If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, I don't know how else to explain it to you. Are we together? There are so many people in Koinonia here preparing for marriage. The economy of Nigeria has become so fierce. If you don't have the power to prosper, you will suffer. You can get a job after laboring for years in the university. You get a job and someone just says, where are you from? And you say, I'm Yeruba. He says, you are not Hausa. Leave the job. It just brings in sentiment to cancel your five, six, seven years of labor. That's the world we live in now. Are we together? Are you my brother? Are you a Christian or otherwise? Are you this? Are you from the same village? Not what do you have to give? In that world of wickedness, you want to move forward? You want to plant a church i was not born in zaria i'm not from kaduna state you don't go to another man's state and do ministry if you don't have the power to prosper there is loyalty that comes with territory are we together that's why jesus told the people start from jerusalem but when you go to a foreign territory brothers and sisters you need the power to prosper that's what our fathers have used and they have opened branches of their ministries in uk in france Huh? someone speaks Yoruba and another person interprets in French and the people never leave there is a pastor writing things in France and people would rather stay there and redeem MFM is there moving as if the devil does not exist you will find places where I was I was dedicating a woman's child um, she used to be in Zaria but now she's in France she was in Holland God used us, you know, and then it was a miracle for her. After many years, she had a child and she went to different churches. The Presbyterian churches there were not dedicating children. They didn't collect tithes and they were not dedicating children because the government would sanction it. And I told her, I said, uh-uh, you mean there's no church around? And she said, the only living church in this area is redeemed. I said, redeemed again. Redeemed again. How did you get there now? And the pastor there is a Yoruba person. Come on now. Power to prosper. You enter a land and become indomitable. A firm grasp of territories. Not intimidated by any government. They will come and go. The mystery keeps you there. Now they are downsizing workers. Between now and December, a lot will happen. I've told us, I told us at 1st of January, this thing will not go well in terms of the economy i'm not a prophet of doom but i told us there is a mystery of exemption that's why god said this are year of multiplied grace and influence isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3 it says gentiles shall come hallelujah if you are looking for a better nigeria this year i tell you the truth under god you are joking i love nigeria are we together i'm a very loyal citizen of this nation but this is prophecy it's an unfolding of events some things will happen the only thing is that there is an exemption the power to prosper please you, you we, when it's time to pray you will cry it in your life that's what makes you different from unbelievers are we together that's the only condition where you can look at your life and give god glory you say no i know the school fees of my children 
before I will go to pay it someone has paid it and he will never tell you who he is write it again if you did not write it the ultimate proof that the anointing to prosper is upon your life is the ministry of men the ministry of helpers not just business ideas it takes men to make things happen have you not seen people with ideas and they died with their ideas someone called pastor Tunde Bakare and told him he said I love you and I've invested 200 million in an investment for you it's just growing whenever you need it they can talk to you and he said what for he said I'm okay and the man said no I had to do it you are my pastor Hi. when a man argues with you about blessing you there is such a thing and we are going to pray there are many other anointings the power listen the power to heal the sick there are three i'm going to teach us ah, there's no time let me just go straight to the three that the lord told me that's number one the power to prosper number two hmm. are you ready it's called resurrection power don't claim you know what it is just listen to me resurrection power is about the apex the zenith of a man's manifestation of the anointing what is resurrection the ability to make dead things come back to life is the hallmark of creation are we together let me tell you something there is resurrection power the bible says Ephesians please help us Ephesians 1 verse 17 we are reading down to 20 for this call Paul says for this cause I Paul I bow my knees right to the father of glory that he may give unto you listen the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse the eyes of your understanding being enlightened or flooded with light he said that he may what know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints here it comes verse 19 read it if you're a christian one to go and what is the exceeding greatness of his what power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power what mighty power next verse which he wrought in christ when he what raised him the power that can raise a thing that has died is power indeed the power that can heal what is alive is power but the power that can raise what is dead come on you carry that anointing and enter a lifeless environment and something gives life isaiah 32 verse 15 we're praying this one scripture and then we we'll stand up and pray let me show you that there is an ability that can bring life to dead things it is called resurrection power brothers and sisters get this anointing and your life will change no matter what it is it's a matter of time and influence upon you read it 32 want to read until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then what happens and the wilderness be counted for a fruitful vine uh -huh. and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest that's the power of resurrection you step into a desert place spirit have your way in us today spirit take your turn as we are changed spirit have your way in us today spirit take as we are spirit have your way One more time. Spirit, 
restores. Ezekiel chapter 37. There is an anointing that can restore. I tell you, I feel the anointing of the spirit. Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he carried me in the spirit. Listen. And set me down in the midst of a valley that was full of what? Bones. No structure. This power of restoration together with the power of resurrection and the power to prosper will make you indomitable. Believe me. Verse 2. Verse 2. And cause me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many bones and they were what? Very dry. Listen, you will step into the life of people with age-long issues. The devil has stolen from them. It's not just that the situation is dead. It was stolen. Then, son of man, verse 3, he says, can these bones live? And he says, only thou no west. Verse 4 This is one key to releasing the anointing and he said unto me prophesy speak Hagar speak command Hagar instruct compel let it be upon these bones and say unto them O ye dry bones who speaks to bones? Who speaks to bones? Dogs eat bones. Men throw bones. God speaks to bones. He says, Hear ye the word of the Lord. And then let's read verse 5. And behold, I will cause breath to enter you. Go to verse 7. So I prophesied, not as I wanted, as I was commanded. And there was what? A noise. The same noise in Acts chapter 2 verse 1. There was a sound. And behold, a shaking. And the Bible says, and behold, bones came together. This is not just resurrection. This is restoration. Are we together? We are going to pray. Hold hands together. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to blast in tongues like an angry man who is tapping into power. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a man, like a woman who is about to take delivery of unction to function place rekete poko choma
Alléluia. Alléluia. I like you to look in one minute at your life. See the barriers that have stood before you. Because they are about to be smashed into pieces. Something is about to come upon your life. That will move you forward. Something is about to come upon your life. That will drive you to the next level. Something is about to come upon your life. The power to run. The power to run. The power to run. The power to fly. Please lift your hands. it is not about falling down don't be distracted with falling down open your spirit and receive something that will change your life don't just focus on falling down the Holy Ghost is doing his thing but beyond falling down open up your heart to receive children adults don't say no some people cannot receive you have a child stand for them don't say they cannot receive. Hallelujah. Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Lift your hands, I want to pray for you. The glory of God is revealed in a man when there is an anointing. Right now in the name that is above all names. I stand upon this apostolic and prophetic office. And I declare that at the count of three. By the ministry of angels. By the unction. By the ministry and the mystery that surrounds this office right now at the count of three I declare that this unction fall inside and outside online and everywhere one, two three, take it take it take it right now receive it power receive it Fire Shaka Baba Katala Baba inside the overflows right now, right now, right now. Every row, every row, every column, every row. The thousands following online. I release it upon you. You that are listening in your home, you that are listening in your room. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Ghost in your life, in your ministry, in your business. The power of the Holy Ghost. The power. Take it now. Lift your hand. There is an anointing called the power to prosper. Lift your hands and receive it. I pray for you now. Shaka Paratai. I have seen this in my life. I have seen this in this ministry. The ministry of man making your life easy. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive the power to prosper. Take the power to prosper. 
take the power to prosper in your ministry take the power to prosper in your job the power to prosper in your academics the power to prosper in your business the power to prosper by this anointing every struggle in your life where you labor by yourself for result it comes to an end this night it comes to an end this night number two the power that can quicken things if that same spirit which raised Christ from the dead dwells in your mortal body that same spirit will revitalize ay, 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 ay. will revitalize hallelujah the Lord is giving me a sign for many of you to be your right hand I don't know what I'm saying but your right hand in a supernatural way your right hand I see the right hand of many people shaking this is what the Lord is showing me right now that anointing for resurrection all over this auditorium take it now take it now take it now take it now every dead thing come alive come alive talita kumi come alive talita kumi dead academics dead relationships Bible says and I will restore to you the years that the canker worm if you have not lost anything in your life you don't need to pray this prayer if you have not lost anything don't lift your hands don't worry but if you are among those who need true restoration you have wasted years time has passed opportunities pass and you need a rapid response listen the bible says they are taken for a prey 
and none say it restore there is a man who can call forth restoration there is an unction that will restore to you lift your hands not only will God restore he will give you grace to be an agent of restoration therefore right now I pray that unction for restoration according to Ezekiel 37 that sound that wind right now may that sound come upon your life take it now take it now take it now take it now go and restore your family take it now go and restore the fortunes that has been lost take it now go back experience academic restoration now now academic restoration jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class jack back to 2-1 jack back to first class go back and get a job whatever made you lose your job a new job comes by this anointing take it now where you would have been promoted but sentiments kept you not only will you be promoted it must be backdated in the name of Jesus listen you will hear strange testimonies from today's service you will hear men who will come and tell you promotion of 10 years was compressed together and brought there is an anointing for it There are some of you, you would have been richer than the way you are now. You would have been better than the way you are now. But witchcraft kept you. I prophesy to you. I'm not asking you to move forward. I'm asking you to move to where you would have been. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you were supposed to have been married... And the devil delayed it. And now you are marrying carry twins. Carry twins. Carry twins. Carry triplets. Carry twins. Carry triplets. I pray for every church here. And every ministry. That should have grown. But you are still stagnated. Between now and December, triple your number. Triple your number. I speak it prophetically. Triple your number. For the sake of the kingdom. I pray for you. Any helper who would have appeared in your life by now. Even if, let me tell you something. There is a way your helper can come too late. That what he was supposed to do has destroyed you already. But I'm praying for you. Where one helper should have come, I call three to come. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Koinonia be believers. I said, where one helper should have come, I call three to appear at the same time. They should appear at the same time. Hallelujah. That happened to Saul, the son of Kish. For three days delay, there were three sets of miracles. One, your father's donkey has been found. Two, you will be on your way going. You will meet three men carrying bread. Two of them will give you. Number three, you will come to the garrison of Philistines. Where there are prophets, you will prophesy like them. All in one day, I pray it again. In the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ the son of the living God the king of kings and the lord of lords the doer of miracles the one who can change any man's life if I be a man of God and there is God that backs this ministry I say it again where one helper would have come I call three to come into your life Hallelujah. One last prayer. 
Moses lay your hand upon Joshua that the spirit will come upon him he said transfer some of your honor to him I want to pray a dangerous prayer for you lift your hands many of you may not understand what I'm about to pray for you but you watch and see what will happen in your life honor is a mantle no man can you don't lobby for it it's not a political position hallelujah he says I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places I want to pray for you if I tell you I've not seen this grace in my life I'm lying it's a grace it's not just business acumen there is an anointing I want you to receive this prayer it will make your life easy when men arise where God opens your eyes many are looking but you see I pray for you father Lord God it is always your desire it is always help that lady please your desire that any grace you give a man be distributed to people it is never your desire to have one man just stand you use one man to receive but it is for the people this honor that you have released upon my life is not just for me it cannot be just for me I pray in the name of Jesus I invoke the covenant I have with you in the secret place and I pray from what you told me in the secret that as I speak you will confirm it right now oh God like a mantle let this honor fall on as many people as desire take it right now take it right now strange honor take it right now strange results take it right now inside and outside online take it right now strange results strange results strange results strange results before you knock may the gate open before you knock may the gate open I lose the loins of kings I lose the loins of kings I lose the loins of kings for your sake I lose the loins of kings for your sake listen the Bible says I will open before you the two lift gates he said they shall not be shut day or night that men may bring unto you the forces of the Gentiles he says you will suck the breast of kings and in their glory shall you boast yourself where men have deserted you so that no man passes through you he says I make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations koinonia as a mantle let this be the signature that many will use to know you are a member of this ministry honor honor uncommon honor those outside make sure you are receiving it honor receive it in the name of jesus but the hand of the diligent make it rich he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand a lazy person no inertia he becometh poor the word poor there is not just financially poor you become bankrupt in every area Romans chapter 12 verse 11 I found a very good scripture for ministers Romans 12 verse 11 let's hurry up so we can have time Romans 12 verse 11 12 verse 11 are you there say amen want to read not slothful in business fervent in spirit serving the Lord he said not slothful the word slothful there means laggy you are not you are not giving life the kind of aggression it takes right he said not slothful in business diligent fervent zealous in spirit serving the lord 
So you want to serve the Lord, you want to serve his body, you must be competent. Please hate average. Let me tell you something. As you are sitting down here, the number one thing that should happen to you this night is tell yourself the truth. I've tried, but compared to where God wants to take me, the journey is still far. It will help you to humble yourself. Whether they write Apostle Jakes, Bishop Jakes, right? It's an ugly scene to see an incompetent person boasting. It's a very ugly scenario. My goal is that we'll have the brightest of the brightest and the best of the best. The head of, the head of um, technical is here. I went to pray for his office at the bio, bio what? Biotech, that biotech place. And when I went in, I looked at his office and I looked at everything. I said, wow. It's not about size. It's about content. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's about content. At least I know that there is a project that they are on now. Projects of, of hundreds of millions. Competence. When you become competent, let me tell you brothers and sisters, all of a sudden where you are coming from will never matter. Jeroboam, the Bible says his mother was a widow. Meaning she did not have the opportunity to do much. But competence. Please, there are many of us here, it is your competence that will wipe the tears of your parents. They didn't go to school. They done their best. Don't sit down in the average there and keep forcing your mother, your father, the poor people doing their best. Rise up and change your status. Don't just sing it as a song. Is God speaking to anyone here? I read the story of Joseph so that it will minister to us because many of us are young people. Joseph was 30 years. 30 years. And as a matter of fact, out of that 30 years, about 12 to 30 of that 30 years was spent as a slave. What is your excuse? You are a keyboardist. You are the only one who claps for yourself when you play. And you are angry and say, oh Lord, open doors for me. You see, the, the problem is, God does not want to disgrace his name. Are you getting me? Because you are an object of praise. Everything that leaves you reveals the glory of God. It's called doxazo, a display of his glory. You must be competent. Competent. I always do this. Mike, play something. Play, just play anything on the keyboard. And um, listen. what he just played is exactly what they are crying for in many churches and they will find him and not even ask what is it nobody will ask whatever and say come we are willing to pay you huh? and you are there pay, playing the things with your fingers and say lord this church I already see my destiny no matter what you saw in your dream I guarantee you if you are not diligent you won't enter into it praise the lord you are a doctor. The first person you gave an injection had problem. Second person had problem. Third problem. Before you blame demons, we're going to, there will be deliverance here shortly. But I told you that the biggest problem of Africa is blaming demons. You can't take demons to court. You can't arrest them. We, we like the fact that they are invisible entities. We excuse our failures. Everything demons. You woke up by nine, I know it's a spirit that, that stopped me. Huh? I planned for five. What happened? You are to go for a job interview by nine. 
by 8 30 you are strolling around carelessly as if it's your place as if you are the director you are the ceo that will interview you was there by seven you stroll around you came late and say in the name of jesus lift up your head oh ye gates see that The Bible says, having the readiness to judge all disobedience, when your obedience, when your own part of the equation is complete. Say, I refuse to be average. Say it, I refuse to be average. At least I'm better than him now. You see, that's the demonic attitude that keeps people as failures. They look around and say, eh, thank God, I'm not good, but at least I'm better than this sister. Even you, you know I'm better than you. God wants to lift his body and it does not take too long but the greatest publicity is to remain in the secret place sharpen yourself become exceptional the Bible says and John remained in the wilderness until his season of appearance when John appeared with uncanny accuracy he knew that this was Jesus he said behold the lamb behold the lamb he didn't mistake in Jesus for John the beloved he didn't mistake him because he asked all the questions in the secret place. Gideon defeated the Midianites. He stayed and asked the question and made sure he was ready. Look at David. David looks at Goliath. And while others are chickening out, David comes. He ran to him. That's what competence does. It gives you confidence. When others are running away, you say, where is the challenge? They were going to hang all the magicians in the days of Daniel. The king said, by tomorrow, if you don't tell me my dream and the interpretation, just know you are dead. And Joseph said, um, I mean, Daniel said, allow me. And the Bible says in the night, the secret, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. And when he got up, he said, oh king, this and that and that. And he was promoted instantly. Listen, brothers and sisters, contend for mastery. Contend for mastery. Those of us who are at work, contend for mastery. Don't be a liability to your place of work and expect promotion. It's not fair. Contend for mastery. And people will look for you. They will beg you. There are people who have paid millions of dollars to speak for one hour. Dr. Miles Munro, one of my greatest mentors, died last year. He wrote about 54 books and about 49 or so of them were bestsellers. It wasn't just because he was anointed. He consulted for government. $10,000 per hour. Even if it's just to look at your face. Competence. Hallelujah. I'm a builder. I'm a builder. You build a house as if the ground is falling. Why should they invite you again? Right? They send you to go and buy something you buy something substandard. You don't even know what is the real thing. Refuse incompetence. You trust God to take you to the area of worship. Challenge. Is this not the issue of competition? This is the issue of standing out to give God room. So that you will shine like the stars. The Bible says do everything without complaining or arguing. So that you will be called blameless and pure. Children of the most high. And you will shine like the stars. As you hold forth the word of life. Be competent. Be competent. No room for laziness. Say amen. So you must gain mastery. Mastery attracts people across significant spheres of influence. Once you have mastery in an area, it will attract significant people in that area. I receive phone calls and text messages and I'm amazed at certain people who call me. They do not even know that they are the people that I have desired to see myself. And they call me. Hello, sir. How are you? Ah. I said, let me quickly humble myself. Fine, sir. I am so, 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 and so. Wow, it's my pleasure. Please, how can I see you? Whatever it is to take you, we can send a driver to come and pick you. This is urgent. Ah! Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days. Prophesy to yourself. 
times is changing. It's no more decline. I'm on my way. I'm on my way to better days. Let me tell you something. Success is not what compels attention. Consistent success is what compels attention. Sooner or later, your grace will be needed. The darkness in the world is too much for you to be ignored if you pay your price. Because not everybody is ready to be competent. So when you become exceptional, forget about the criticism for now. With time, people will swallow their words and look for you. I assure you, the same boss that said over my dead body will be alive and will be the one to shake you and say we are partners in progress. By the time his company knows dives, he will find you for sure. Is God speaking to anyone here? Whatever your hand findeth to do. That's what my Bible says. It said do it with all your might. Give it the best. Give it the best. I refuse mediocrity in my life. I refuse mediocrity. I will sharpen the sword of ministry. I will make sure I am exceptional to deliver word in season to God's people. The sick will be healed. The body will be guided. Whatever quota I have been anointed and have been graced, I will do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I'll do my best for you. I'll do my best. My very best. I'll do my best. So could it be that the reason why God has not announced you, listen, could it be that the reason why God has not announced you is because he does not want you to blow that opportunity. God is saying prepare. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Say it, prepare. That's the word of the Lord for now. Prepare. Prepare. See the testimony of our brother Aaron. One side he's leaving a job, another job is coming. A federal government job. We're going to talk about the anointing. But brothers and sisters, let us not deceive ourselves. God will judge me if I don't tell you the truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? The anointing is only active when it comes upon a refined gift. When God anoints your grace, when God anoints your ability, you become a sign and a wonder. That takes me to the next thing I'll talk about very briefly. The anointing. You are ready for the anointing among other things when you refine your gifts. When you refine your abilities. When you refine it, then you are ready for the anointing. Sharpen yourself. Sharpen yourself. And then you are ready for the anointing. The fire never fell until there was a sacrifice upon the altar. The fire does not just fall. The anointing falls when you are prepared. When you are ready. Then you become relevant. 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 I refuse to be relegated. And I refuse you and forbid you from being relegated. Not just because you are a Christian. But because you do not have what to offer. Hallelujah. My younger brother, very brilliant gentleman. When he graduated, a job was not forthcoming. And I looked at him. I told him, young man, just keep sharpening your ability. You are too gifted to be ignored. It's a matter of time. Praise the Lord. For one year, that guy, very intelligent young man, but he committed his best. He gave his all. He was very, very serious. He was getting a job that they were paying him 5000 I told him, no problem. Stay there. Just be serious. He became exceptional. If he did not come for work, they would know. And all of a sudden, it was like a dream. He was called to become a lecturer in University of Joss. He's a lecturer right now. No devil stopped it. No devil stopped it. Everybody say competence. When they called him and he spoke to them, they knew this was a bright material. If you are called, if the kings that are to lift you call on you right now, will you enter the palace and go back to the prison? Or will you enter the palace
press and shut the door of the prison forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh God, connect me to that person. Connect me to that ministry. Give me an opportunity to preach in that bigger platform. And God is saying, are you prepared? As far as I'm concerned, I'm willing to bless you. But have you done your work? Are you prepared? I vowed a vow in my life. I will never enter the presence of greatness and go back to my old level. If I step into any atmosphere of greatness, I am prepared in season and out of season. Praise the Lord. When your preparation is complete, then you are ready for the anointing. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. The Bible says how God anointed that Jesus Christ after he spent time learning the, the, the Pentateuch and prepared himself, getting an exact blueprint of his assignment. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And then together, his diligence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says he went about doing good, became invincible, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He said, I have found David, my servant, Psalm 89 verse 20, downwards. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. I had to find him. I found David sins. But he had not done his work. Now I have found my servant. And with my holy oil I have anointed him. Hallelujah. A man in the construction of the tabernacle, the architect of that construction, he was called Bezalel. The Bible says he was a man who was gifted in craftsmanship. And the anointing of the spirit came. Look, let me tell you, when God anoints your grace, he will command men to hear you. And no, even if you are living in a cave, you become a city that is set on a hill that cannot, cannot. You spend your time praying and studying the word and opening up yourself and making yourself available. Then that unction will come upon you. It comes in a heavy way that nobody will deny the hand of God upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a powerful thing to see someone who has done his assignment and is carrying the unction of the spirit. He becomes undeniable, invincible. No matter what you say about that person, the world is too dark for the, that grace to be ignored. I show you a key. God wants you great. God wants you blessed. For many of us in this miracle service, this is the key to the next dimension. I don't just want us to say it is it's raining, raining, let it rain and so on and so forth. No. Hallelujah. Grace. And I salute so many people who left various places to come tonight because it is part of your play your own part and tonight grace will come upon you and it will distinguish you like Saul you will go back and they will say ah, ah is Saul also one of the prophets when did you enter this dimension favor is when preparation meets opportunity it's not magical it's a formula and God is calling us wipe the tears of your family Forget about the challenges of now. That's why we are here. To address it. But above and beyond that, you must make up your mind, brothers and sisters, that something must be different about my life. Make up your mind that by next month's miracle service, I'm coming a new person. I'm coming a better person. Your phone that used to be on silent, by March, calls are coming every day. You wake up with calls and text messages. Men are, are placing demands on the grace, willing to pay any amount, job or no job. There are people who are not working, but they are getting the salary of CEOs because people will pay for your gift. Let me tell you, it says buy the truth. God put a price tag on the truth. And if you have the truth, men will buy the truth. They will pay you. And they will call it a privilege. Is God speaking to someone here? And don't say, I didn't go to school. Or I didn't have the opportunity. I cannot speak English. No, no, no. None of those things. Master whatever God has given you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
master whatever he has given you and tonight an anointing comes on it and I send you like the foxes of Samson and you will step in and begin to do wonders the pride of every true leader is not that he becomes a superstar I've said it again and again that true leadership the hallmark of leadership is that you are able to influence followers to also become leaders not maintain followers Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Shortly before we rise, I want you to pray as you are seated. You know the area in your life God has been wanting to bless you. But the truth is your incompetence has limited him. Inside and outside, no matter how far, lift your voice and talk to your maker. And say, Lord, I'm sorry. This music ministry... Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Competence. Exceptional competence. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of being a mediocre. I'm tired of my life looking as if you are not mighty. I'm tired of joining the crowd in mediocrity. In this season of the rain, I'm challenging myself. Come on, pray, young and old. It's time for a new season. I arise and I shine for my light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Gentiles come to my light and their kings to the brightness of my rising. Never will I be termed forgotten. But I will be called Pula. Pula. The land of delight. I reject mediocrity in business. Mediocrity in ministry. As a student, I reject mediocrity. I challenge laziness. Pray. As a worker, I am the best staff. I am an envoy. Pray. I break ordinary standards. I refuse mediocrity. Pray. As a minister of the gospel, I contend for grace. I stop joining the crowd in mediocrity. Go ahead and pray. As a businessman, I become exceptional. 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 I'm an ambassador. I represent the parliament of heaven. And I represent God at the highest level of excellence. Pray, Koinonia. As you cry upon him, he grants you grace. Lord, you want to change our stories in this season. We make room. We make room. We make room. We make room. We, make room. we reject the spirit of laziness. Time and chance happened to them all. Opportunity and seasons come to them all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray this prayer point. You're going to ask God for grace. Mention the areas where you need God to grant you grace to be competent. There are books you will need to buy. There are seminars you will need to attend. There are mentors you will need to find. Whatever it will take to be like an axe that has been sharpened. Go ahead and pray. I receive that grace. Grace for competence. Exceptional competence. Don't let any man preach you against competence. Incompetence will make you poor. Incompetence will make you angry. Incompetence will make you a failure. Incompetence will make you average. Incompetence will make you average. 
Shakata prakata la bakoto prakot. I must stand out. I must stand out. In my generation, I must stand out. Because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Listen, I'd like you to pray. Pray for grace to be outstanding. Lift your voice. Grace to be outstanding. Forget about the pain of today. The Bible says for our light afflictions, which is what for a moment, walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Pray. While we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, subject to change. The closed door is subject to change. When you are competent, nations will celebrate you. Without bias, they will celebrate you. They will demand your grace. They will pay for it. Praise the Lord. So I want you to have this at the back of your mind today. Go back and buy the books you need to buy. Go and sell those shoes and buy books. Are you getting it? He said, I, Daniel, understood by books. Stop living a fake life. Go and pack those materials. Sell them and buy what will give you relevance. The Bible speaks about the prophet Samuel. He said the word of the Lord did not fall in his mouth. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Be exceptional. Don't applaud yourself when you don't have to. Be competent and the world will applaud you. And you will not be ashamed of it. You will not be ashamed to stand before the platforms he gives you. Because you know that you have, you have done your assignment. You will always be ashamed. You will always envy successful people. You will always hate them when you remain a mediocre. But when you rise, you become colleagues in progress. You become partners in progress. You celebrate them because you have become colleagues. Hallelujah. Now to the business of the night. I want us to pray. The Lord is going to do a quick walk in this place. There are mighty healings and deliverances. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lift your voice and pray and say, Lord, my time for a visitation has come. Pray from the depth of your heart, inside and outside. No matter how far you are, pray. Insist that you must be touched this night. Insist that something must change. It doesn't take time. It just takes one encounter. You came with a lot of challenges. Don't sit down and waste your time. Make sure you cry unto God. Tell the Lord exactly what you want tonight. Go ahead. Please speak to the Lord, especially for those standing outside. Make sure you talk to him. I feel the wind of your spirit Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear We see the rain of your love We feel the wind of your spirit 
Now the heartbeat of heaven Let us hear So let it rain Let it rain Would you open The floodgates of heaven Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I don't care what the issue is. Let your faith rise right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I see sick people all around, inside and outside, and I see all kinds of people. But I want you to know tonight that the God of wonders is still in this place. So let hope rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Your hands, everyone. Hallelujah. Listen. Tonight there is an unusual anointing upon me. I began to sense this right from home. There will be massive deliverance right now. Massive deliverance. There are people who have come. There are families that have come from far and near. Hallelujah. And every challenge, every power of darkness. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by my father. Please lift your hands inside and outside. Participate. Listen. We are going to shout that name. Please don't you think it's just a chorus or it's a formula. There is an anointing with it. Because it's a name that is above every other name. Hallelujah. You are going to shout that name. At the count of three. As you shout that name. There will be all kinds of deliverances. Many of you, you are standing in not just for yourself. But for your family members, all kinds of spirits and spells attempting to bring back what Jesus died for. In the name of Jesus, I speak to the realm of the spirit and I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that every foul devil, every covenant, every spell at the count of three, let the fire of God separate those people right now. One, two, three. Shake it, those devils. I command those forces in the name of Jesus. I cast out those devils. Bring them out. Shake it, The fire is falling on witchcraft outside. The fire is falling. Every power that is not of God. I send the rod of judgment. Every power that is not of God, everyone standing upon this ground, I come with an apostolic anointing in the name of Jesus. Satan, let God's people go. There's no hiding place. 
for the power of God is everywhere there is no hiding place not for witchcraft there is no hiding place I command judgment let the angels of the living God move across this congregation and break chains hallelujah I see a lot of chains lift your hands again I see chains so many chains break chains break break chains break listen some of you this chains has lasted for years and decades i don't care how long it has been as you shout that name again i see many people outside you will know the chain has broken that embargo over your family you will know it when it happens because I hear sounds of change at the count of three shout that name again with all your might and I command that as they shout may those chains break one two three chains of stagnation chains. Hear me, listen. Listen. I guarantee you, not one person standing on this ground will go back with the chains holding you. I'm speaking to the powers. They know the voice of God. This is the season of the rain. This is the season of the rain. And in the name of Jesus, now over families, any family under the sound of my voice, you have suffered mysteriously. I come in the name of the Lord whose I am and I command judgment upon the powers of darkness. Judgment upon the powers of darkness. Right families, Hallelujah. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that he may destroy, put to an end, annihilate. It says, Son of man, what yes thou? Zechariah 1.18. He says, four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. So that no man will lift up his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. And they will terrorize those horns. We have come tonight to terrorize the power of darkness. They must let you go. 
after nine plagues, Pharaoh refused to let them go. He said, yet will I send one more plague upon Pharaoh and Egypt and after that, he will let you go. Jesus paid the price in full, completely. There is no reason why the devil should tie you down. When he was on the cross, he said it is finished. And we are here to enforce that which, that fatigue. In the name of Jesus, for those in front here, they represent families. I don't care what kinds of spirits or entities. At the count of three, you will let God's people go and release their families. No matter how long the blood of Jesus annihilates the legal hold you have. I don't care what covenants you have. In the name of Jesus, therefore I speak to every foul spirit that at the count of three, you let them go never to return. Right now in the name of Jesus, one, two, three, go, 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 go. Out you go. Out you go. Out you go. Never to return. Out you go. By the ministry of the blood, by the ministry of the blood, I cause you. By the ministry of the blood, release the families, release their finances, release their destinies. Go now, go now. I compel you by the blood of Jesus. Of captivity, that Lord opens that gate. Hallelujah! I declare every family under bondage free. I don't care how long the doors have been closed, we open it now. You will begin to experience unlimited breakthroughs. Yeah. Hallelujah. Who is Stephanie? Stephanie. I hear a name Stephanie. You are wearing a like orange veil. Do we have somebody like that? Is it an orange veil or something? Stephanie. Yeah. Bring that woman. That lady or that woman, whoever. Just let them win. Okay, young lady. This is the spirit of death. Bring her. Lay hands on her stomach. I curse that spirit. Every spirit of infirmity. Out! Now! Leave her alone. She will rise up completely here. Stephanie. Stephanie. I see here the name. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a family in a vision. We have to hurry up. We really want to finish first. So I'm seeing a family. There is a family that came here. I'm seeing four people. Like is it four children? Or something? A family. Do we have someone like that? Please, if, if it's yours... If it's your case or it looks like your own, just signify and let us know if there is none, we can move forward. Because this is what the Lord is showing me. I'm seeing a family. It's like four children. They are here. They came here. Shut up. Is it you? You are the one. Where are the people? Where are your children? Come. Why are you sitting back? Come. Do you know that there is a call of God upon the family? Not just your mother, but upon the family. And it's a prophetic call. It's a prophetic call. Right? It's not only your mother. I, didn't, I'm, I'm, I don't know you people. But the hand of God is going to come upon you. It's a mighty anointing of the spirit. It will come upon you. Are you part of the family? Huh? You are related. 
You are what? You are your own. Okay, please, until I call you, but come, come and stand since you have come. For the Lord is going to bring restoration. This is the first thing that will happen. Mark it. Restoration. Number two. What do you do? Because the Lord is going to lift you. Why am I seeing a ring in your hand? I'm not seeing a physical ring. But it's in the spirit I'm seeing a ring. Your wedding bells are ringing. Are you married? Huh? This is what I'm... We don't feel embarrassed. We are a family. Marriage is not a bad thing. Abi mommy, is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing. Because there is nobody and you are wondering, this is what you are thinking in your heart. Where is the person? Listen. He said, we see the fire. We see the fire. We see the wood. Where is the lamb? And he said, Jehovah Jireh. The same word that comes. Listen. Listen, my dear. You don't know me. I'm not a herbalist. Are you getting my point? When the Lord brings a word, he will make it happen. My brother, this year you will hold finances that will make you afraid. Come, what do you do? What does, what, what do you do? Huh? That's not it at all. This one is just for generosity, just to prepare you. God is going to open a strange opportunity for you. Do you believe what I'm saying? is a strange opportunity if you people have ever doubted whether the hand of God is upon your mother I'm telling you she's not fake I'm saying it now because they have been talking about this woman she sees and people have been saying she's fake I'm saying if this woman is fake she will not enter this place I guarantee you except I'm not a man of God please she's not fake what she needs is is the, an, an accurate alignment to the word of God so that her prophetic vistas will be sharpened. She has a lot of prophetic insight. But the word level is very low. So there is dwindling. That stability in the spirit is not there. That's all. This mama is not fake. Because I'm seeing her walking in a prophetic and a healing anointing. Very powerfully. Come. Madam, come. Let's pray to the king. You have taken all the glory. You have taken Hold hands, both of you. Mm. I show you a mystery. Madila katabarata. Jembra mato zatali kaparando skolabaya. Mambro no supaya. One will chase a thousand. But two will chase ten thousand. Confirm your word right now, oh God, as I speak. There is a transference of graces. Right now happening between both of you. Is a drinking together. Is a happy anointing that is coming because you will also step into a strong evangelical and prophetic anointing. Drink of that wine right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to help her. You won't be with her forever. But the Lord is going to lift you in due season. And you will begin to see in a strange way. May the Lord bless you. May he anoint you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I break the embargo of darkness over the family. Come. You're a great lady, but the devil wants to oppress your life. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Mm, for he is here. Light shines in the darkness. You must release her. Let her go. Now. I'm seeing an old woman's face. But in the name of Jesus, I declare... You step into strange dimensions of grace. I command deliverance to you right now. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. It's alright. I bless this family. The Lord changes your story. You will return with dramatic testimonies. In Jesus name. Newi. I'm hearing a name of a place. There is. There is Newi. I know it's an evil place, right? There is. There is, a, there is somebody, I, I think a, a lady or a guy or somebody from that place. Newi. Who is that? Please, if it's your case, whether you are outside, just make your way so that you don't waste our time. Please, there are so many other people. Come, mama. She's your mother. What's wrong with her? 
this working, please help us. She's having problem with her legs. She's having problem with her legs. knee problems. Her legs. Oh. Her legs. Her Arthritis. I don't know. You don't know. Yeah. You I love God. Yes. Very well. Very well. Huh? Very well. Well enough to marry a man of God. Yes. Because that's your husband. He's a man of God. Thank you, dear. I don't know how, madam. <laughs> See mommy laughing. <laughs> mommy, come. What is wrong with her leg, please? Let's let's not. Where it has been disturbing her for some time now. How long? Left? Up to two years now. I feel a swoon in my waist by my left leg, fish ground. I used to feel serious pain. Don't, don't, don't cry. It's okay. Mama, look at me. You came here because you believe in Jesus. Yes. Look at me. Just look at me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. I receive healing. I receive healing. Pain. Pain. Go. Go now. Now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, you believe Jesus? I believe Jesus. Run up here. Come. Just come. Forget about the legs. Come. Go ahead. Do what you couldn't do. Look. Lord, praise the Lord. I came to this program today. I'm no more feeling the pain. I even I went Check. to hospital today. My come on, give Jesus. Oh, I'm ready to break every chain. Break every chain. Let's go. Come. Where are you from? Cross River. Huh? Cross River. You are serious about your love for God, right? Yes. Because you are going to marry a man of God. Yes, I am. You, are, you know it now. Yes. What I'm saying, you have known it. I'm just confirming to you. Thank you, Jesus. Is it a lie? They just say I'm lying. Thank you, Jesus. Ladies know a lot of things. They just hide it. I'm not endorsing your dream and your vision. No, I don't know what you saw. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Not only that, truly, truly, the grace and the spirit upon your mother is upon you because your mother is a good woman. Mama, tell me one thing you want God to do in your family. I want my children to serve God. I want all of them to serve God. Father, stretch them. your hands towards this family, everybody. What a request. Not for money. Many of you will ask for money. I will give me money sharp, sharp. In the name of Jesus, you are the son. Where are the rest? You are the only one. Just two of you. Praise the Lord. Stretch your hands and pray for this family. Eleven children. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will serve the Lord. I bless this family. Let doors of prosperity be open. Let doors of advancement be open. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Celebrate Jesus for Mama's miracle. Rejoice with them and you will have your own testimony. Hallelujah. Who brought this person? Help us now. Where are the people? Huh? I'm the one. It's okay, Mama. Relax. What is the situation? What is it? He can't walk. What happened to him? It's okay. What happened to him? Look at me. How are you? Can you talk? Let me talk. What happened to you? Uh, I felt sick last year or two when they took me to the hospital. Oh, when was so many examinations. Now they say it's cancer. And when they refer me to Shika here. They said you have cancer. Yes. So sir. right now you have cancer. Yes, so they've the, left you to the, die. Yes, sir. Cut the, of your legs. Yes, sir. I cannot even walk, sir. You can eh? I can't walk, sir. Since when? Since when did he stop walking? Last month. You believe that the power of God is going to set you free? Yes, sir. My brother, look at me. 
Jesus is able to heal you. You believe that? You have taken all the praise. You have taken all the glory. You have taken all the There is a spirit. I curse that spirit right now. I curse that spirit. Right now, you feel fire going through your body. I curse that spirit upon these legs. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release the power of God. I command that spirit. Leave him right now. Move your legs. Start moving your legs. Try to move it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you feeling the legs? Do you feel the legs? Now I release strength to these legs. Right now. I release strength to these legs. In the name of Jesus. I release strength to these legs. Right now. Exercise the legs and let him start moving it. Go ahead. The cry in your family comes to an end. By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Lord visits you and brings to an end. He brings to an end in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please call this mama, this madam. Come, he will answer you. Come. Massage his leg. I will tell you when to pick him up. He's visiting you in a strange way. Bringing breakthroughs to you. Refining the fire. And causing the hand of wickedness over your family. That embargo is lifted over your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come ma. Don't worry. God is touching everybody. Just connect to what he's doing. Mommy. Look at me. Please don't cry. Look at me. Just look at me. I want you to know that the captivity in your family has come to an end. I know you are crying. Don't worry about it. Believe me. Look at me. Where is your husband? He's not here. No come. Is that all there is to the story? When I left house, he never come back from work. I need to pray because your marriage is shaking. You need the grace of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Mama, don't cry. God is bringing you restoration. That's what I hear in my spirit. And I command and I prophesy restoration. In the name of Jesus Christ. I cause that force of darkness. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm looking at an angel walking through this room. This is what I'm looking at an angel. The Lord wants me to talk to somebody. That person will come under the power of God right now. When that happens, please let me have that person. You have taken all the voices. You have taken all lamentations. You have taken all the praise. You have made let me yours. Please bring out. I give you, I give you, I give you the highest praise. A fire that ignites you and sets you free. I command in the name of Jesus that influence of darkness leaves you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, please. All those who came here specifically for healing miracles, find your way to the front right now. Worship team, give us a powerful session of worship as we pray. Please, don't make it rowdy, inside and outside. Aside from the, the family that I minister to, if you came with a sick person, please come and line up here quickly. Let's save time. Expect the power of God to touch you. Please. You see what the Lord is doing. 
and all of us who are standing, if there is a loved one or somebody you know, as you are standing, connect to them. Please, don't lose connection with this service. Some of you can take steps of faith. God is already touching people. Don't lose connection. No matter how many we are here to minister to you. It will be a quick walk. Pastor Jexa, it's going to be a very quick walk because of time. There are still some other things God wants to do. Especially the prophetic aspect of this meeting. There is a guy outside. The power of God is going to hit him in a mighty way. God is bringing restoration in his life. A gentleman, it will be like a tornado. It will be a mighty encounter. Now listen, all of you standing, I want you to know that Jesus heals. The price for your complete healing has been paid. I know that there are HIV people standing here. There are people with all kinds of medical reports. I guarantee you the price has been paid. And so as we pray, everyone I'd like you to connect because some of you shortly, you will be receiving strong impartations of the healing anointing. So you must focus. Don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Elijah said, if you can see me, don't, don't be distracted, please. Hallelujah. Please pass your request, ushers. Let's hurry up, please. Get them to the aisle. Just pass it to the last person. The last person by the side, please. Help the ushers inside and outside. It's not a ritual. There is a strange mystery of answered prayers in this place. Please. Begin to pray in tongues as you do that, please. Everywhere. Begin to pray in tongues. All those connecting with us online. It's time for them to connect now so that we can. Hallelujah. We're not trying to build doctrines out of. No, no, I'm, I'm one person that fights tradition, especially where the Spirit of God is not there. But this was an instruction God gave according to what Hezekiah did. Hezekiah carried the threat letter and brought it to the altar and laid it there before God. Hallelujah. Please, very quickly, inside and outside. If others sent it to you by text and you've not copied it out, just you can just keep it and connect by faith. Unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord Jesus, we come before you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. These are the requests of your people. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It says, with prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. Make it known. Don't hide it. Make it known. Begin to talk to the Lord about what is on the altar here right now. Please pray. Hearing is our Father glorified when ye bear much fruit. Some of you, the request you wrote here, only God can grant it. That's why we don't read it. We just pray. Because probably if some of us see what you've written here, our faith level may not be able to take it. Please make sure everybody's request gets here. No matter how long, let's do it very quickly. I have seen God do strange things. Strange things in the lives of people. We have seen all kinds of dramatic miracles. Please, I want you to know the person you are praying to. I want you to know that it's not to Joshua Selman. It's not to an idol. You are not praying to the president of this nation. The king of kings. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Yeah. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am. I am. My 
myself and Pastor Jakes will be praying passionately on this request. I want you to believe that as we make contact with your request, I tell you the angels, there are some of you as we are praying on it instantly, you will begin to get answers. In one minute, everybody begin to blast in tongues as we pray. Shaka Father, hear the prayers of your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Let there be all kinds, all kinds of miracles. I agree with my brother. All kinds of miracles. Supernatural jobs. Supernatural lifting. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Unto you that answered prayer will all flesh come. Blessed Lord, let every cry, every need, Lord, every pain, Lord, let things that look impossible by men, we pray for a change in the name of Jesus. We ask for the hand of God to come mighty, Lord, upon families. Let there be testimonies, Lord, unfolding testimonies. We pray for the hand of God, Lord, to open doors that have been closed. Hear that, though. We ask for your mighty miracles, breakthroughs, Lord. The blessings of God that make it rich and added no sorrow. Father, we pray for jobs. Amazing, blessed jobs, Lord. Miracles, miracles, Lord. Healings of families, Lord. We pray that, Lord, contracts that have been overdue, Lord, we pray for sudden calls. Calls, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord, the tears of your people, Lord, the needs of your people. In the name of Jesus, we command that angels responsible for bringing answers to these prayers be released right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heavens be open over your people in the blessed name of Jesus. My Father, as we lay these prayer points before you, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus, we ask that doors be opened. Let greatness arise in your people in the blessed name of Jesus. Thank you because God, as we ask in the name of Jesus, we know you answer in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. There is a heavy anointing in this place. Just a few minutes and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of prophecy. I may not be able to call everybody one by one, but the word of God, Kabbalah Taya, he said it's the discerner of the thoughts and the intents. No matter where you are, one word of prophecy can tear open whatever limitation. Please, I want you to believe. Everything you see us do in this miracle service is as instructed. There is no room for entertainment. We fear God. And will not gather you to waste your time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, believe in the Lord and you shall be established. He said, believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. Lift your hands. As your level changes, lift your hands. Something will happen to you. Please 
hands I want you to receive as I pray shout amen from the depth of your heart amen means let it be so it's an act of faith hallelujah I bring to an end the era of mourning in your life and your family I say it again the era of mourning by prophecy let mourning end in your life and in your family hallelujah hear me every embargo that has stood on the way to your next level by the weapon of the prophetic in the name of the Lord Jesus I command those limitations broken human limitations demonic limitations I command them broken now I command them broken now hallelujah hallelujah I declare every dimension you should have entered by now that you have not entered by the mystery of restoration in the name of Jesus between now and the next miracle service step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions I prophesy to you step into those dimensions step into those dimensions, step into those dimensions. hallelujah I pray for every student here listen this proverb will no longer be used in your life listen that proverb that makes God look as if he's not alive in your academics in the name that is above all names we send angels to every department of every campus represented here we send angels to every faculty may they tear down may they uproot every trace of wickedness may they tear down may they uproot in the name of jesus let missing scripts be found let students that have been victimized be restored in the name of jesus hallelujah for god has not given us the spirit of fear there are many people you want to take steps but fear is keeping you down in the name of jesus the bible says and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i cause fear from your life now i cause fear from your life now i cause fear i cause fear in the name of Jesus hallelujah I pray for you there are many who have been praying Lord reveal to me the purpose of my existence there are people who have been crying I don't want to waste my time in destiny I pray for you that through a night vision mysterious prophetic encounters may your exact assignment be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ there are people praying right now all you, are, you have come here for is the direction for the next level you just came to get direction I prophesy to you the Bible says and ye shall hear a voice from behind saying this is the way I command between now and next week let there be accurate direction accurate direction in the name of Jesus I pray for you there are people here whenever they want to favor you people change their minds for reasons you do not understand I pray in the name of Jesus that every planting that is not of God 
that is making your helpers reject you in the name of the lord jesus i command them broken now i command them broken now hallelujah by the power of prophecy i connect you to the men that need to help you and lift you to your next dimension please take seriously what i'm saying in the name of jesus i connect you i connect you business helpers ministry helpers academic helpers marital helpers receive the ministry in the name of jesus prophecy is like rain your job is to receive it once you receive it it starts acting immediately in your life hallelujah i pray in the name of jesus christ over your health that spirit that keeps bringing recurrent health conditions the price has been paid and therefore by the blood i break you free from any covenant of infirmity i break you free from I command everyone under any spirit of infirmity that is recurrent may you be free once and forever hallelujah I challenge embargo of hardship over people and families there are families that love God but it's like hardship will never leave them in the name of Jesus we stand tonight in this place and we challenge the root of hardship by next miracle service return with breakthrough testimonies return with breakthrough testimonies you may not know how it will happen but may my God go before you and shock you hallelujah I pray for your finances in the name of Jesus there are many who are giving you are tithing you are faithful but it just looks like when things are about to happen there are limitations in the name of the Lord Jesus I declare that beginning from next month I invoke the mystery of divine supply the same way hear me the same way a raven the Bible does not tell us where it came from but it brought bread for the prophet I command mysteriously may your gates be open now to receive the forces of the Gentiles I pray for everyone called dull in this place you understand but something happens to your mind that 10 times better anointing that distinguishes people receive it in the name of Jesus I sense an anointing one more time I pray that prayer whatever stops you from understanding the bible says and he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray for you may understanding be granted unto you yeah. hallelujah favor the one factor that separates men that favor in a heavy dimension may it mantle you from now may favor mantle you from now in the name of jesus financial favor marital favor academic favor favor in your job favor in ministry hallelujah everyone who is confused about life any aspect of life i bring that confusion to an end now 
I pray for all those who came here specifically trusting God for the fruit of the womb in fact I pray for you listen not just physical barrenness any area of your life this is the year of the rain and when rain falls barrenness stops therefore I command be fruitful in the name of Jesus fruitful multiply replenish subdue and have dominion in the name of Jesus I command everything called dead in your life and your family I don't care for how long it has died your health your business your life in the name of the Lord Jesus I command resurrection right now in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you there are people who desire God you desire an encounter that's what you need you desire an encounter I pray for you may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you you may not understand what I'm saying may the angel of the Lord's presence visit you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your gift your ability your skill whatever you are using that brings bread help her please I pray for you the works of your hands because you are determined to be diligent you will see the testimonies that will come from this prayer I put an anointing on your skill I put an anointing I put an anointing on your ability I put an anointing on your gift on your work on your skill may it begin to produce in a supernatural dimension hallelujah now lift your hands I just want to do an impartation there are people who have come from different places please be sensitive we are out of time we will soon round up but it's time to receive something listen listen I told you there will be many impartations hear me the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference are you hearing what I'm saying no matter what you are doing when the grace is not there you will struggle forever please hear me especially in ministry if you are a minister of the gospel in this place help that please it's time for you to catch this thing for real it's yours for the taking listen I want to pray as I stretch my hands and pray inside and outside wherever you are you must not be in ministry like fivefold whatever area many of you will begin to have dreams encounters listen many of you will step into healing graces there's no time to move one by one but i'm going it's one of the major assignment god gave me tonight please believe it you will argue it at your own detriment there is a cheap route the help of god is here to lift you the help of god is here to take you lift your hands everybody father i pray that in the next two minutes let there be from the front to the back outside let there be strange impartations at the count of three one two three let the wind blow right now receive it prophetic graces apostolic graces shake it take it take it a protosia dreams visions encounters dreams visions encounters the word of knowledge gifts of the spirit let there be distributions right now right now right now the gift of wisdom the word of knowledge the working of miracles the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues the gift of prophecy gifts of healing healing mantles receive it receive it leadership anointings 
leadership anointings leadership anointings I impart it leadership anointings utterance 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 I release it to you utterance in the name of Jesus to communicate the things of the spirit utterance receive it utterance I, I release upon you insight into scriptures insight into the mysteries of the kingdom I grant you access by grace to the mysteries of the spirit the mysteries of dominion the mysteries of prosperity the mysteries of impact hallelujah the final prayer I want to pray for you is honor many of you don't know what honor is honor is not the same thing as blessings you can be blessed but not honorable it says and Jabez was more honorable honor that fragrance that compels loyalty that fragrance Zamatic alive Lord everyone under the sound of my voice inside and outside may this grace that that will bring honor to a man beyond your age beyond your level receive it now in the name of jesus i release it from the depths of my heart receive it in the name of jesus from today everywhere you go may honor follow you and i declare these hands that are lifted like aaron like joshua lifted up the hands of his servant moses i command may those hands never go down may the lord cut off from your life everything that will bring your hands down and i pray for marriages supernaturally may god connect people supernaturally in the name of jesus christ hallelujah as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members no matter where they are i prophesy as it is happening to you let it happen to every one of your family members hallelujah now very quickly you are here you've never given your heart to the lord please hear me please keep standing everybody no moving around let's honor them just in one minute you're here inside and outside you have never made a decision for jesus christ or at one time you have made a decision for jesus but you found yourself dwindling you have seen the hand of god and jesus is calling you back home there's nothing to be ashamed of don't let any man cajole you win the war in your heart today for the sake of your destiny wherever you are please start running from your seat inside and outside and come out here i want to lead you personally to christ and pray for you go ahead are there people like that go ahead don't look at any neighbor don't look at anyone wherever you are inside or outside don't pretend it jesus is calling you very quickly very quickly where are those who are giving their lives to jesus inside or outside make your way to the front don't be ashamed please appreciate them coin on you as they come God bless you keep coming God bless you keep coming no matter how far rush and make your way young and old God bless you keep coming it's time to make it right don't play games with destiny Jesus is calling you come and surrender everything totally and consciously totally and consciously please make way for them don't stop them make way for them come to Jesus hallelujah I salute and congratulate every one of you for coming out hallelujah the prayer you are praying is not reciting a poem I want you to pray from the depths of your heart lift your right hand and say after me 
passionately and truly say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you I believe you died for me you rose again for me I surrender completely to you take charge of my life from today and forever I denounce sin I denounce Satan and I receive eternal dearly life. beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salman and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye